Good evening and thank you for joining us. And as we we're just seeing in that sports headline there, Carly, it's a little deja vu here. Down two games to none in the series again. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's kind of going to be the joke now. I had a chance to sit down with Coach Curran today. He's like, you know, I don't know if people thought that we just, we've done it before, so maybe we want to do it again. Now, that's not the case, but uh, it is encouraging that the Cats have come from uh, have come from behind. But now, as we know, this is a best of seven series. And before, we were dealing with the best of five situation. So the exciting thing is, is that we will get the chance to see the Bobcats play Wednesday and Thursday right here in Lloyd. Minister. Should be good. Those games are both very close. Only very one Very close. Game, so. And we're talking about literally the best team in the country. Oh, so well, hopefully mm -hmm. we'll get some people up for those games. And Gerard, what can they expect as they head out there tomorrow night or even tonight, I guess, if you're going anywhere? Well, tonight is good. Tomorrow night, put a question mark on <laughs> that. But are we supporting the Bobcats all the way? So even if it, it's a light dusting, we'll be at the Civic Center. Let's have a look at what we're dealing with right about now. It's been a pretty day. Minus 16. The wind chills in the 20s for the better part of it. 70% humidity. The winds out of the south at five kilometers an hour and you can see that we're outside the normals for this time of the year what we're looking at across the region uh, we got our high temperature of that minus 16 just at around two o'clock in the lakeland they're up to about minus eight from since about uh, four o'clock this afternoon and look at that in the battle for it's already a clear evening on the way at minus 14. so we'll talk about what's happening later on and of course look ahead to tomorrow but in the meantime jacob it's back to you Last week, the Alberta government made amendments to Bill 36 concerning property rights, partly in response to public pressure. But many landowners feel the changes aren't significant enough. As Clayton Brown reports, with proposals for new transmissions lines in the Lakeland region, residents don't like the direction the government is going. Over 200 people attended a meeting in St. Paul with guest speaker Keith Wilson. The St. Albert lawyer has been voicing his concerns over certain bills, which he feels take away property owners' rights. Now, with the possibility of new transmission lines in the area, concerns are growing. They are perfectly prepared to pay for a stable, reliable grid. They want to err on the side of the light staying on, then going out. They've assessed the grid. They say it's stable. Some minor upgrades are needed. According to ASO again, we need to have an additional 8,000 uh, 8, megawatts of power to be put on the, on the grid in the next approximately 10 years. Under Bill 50, multiple routes for one new line will be proposed, and property owners say that's unfair. It's dividing and conquering. It, it makes people look at their line and say, oh my God, I cannot have this next to me and my grandkids. Maybe if we do certain things, we can push it over on the other people. It's wrong. Wilson says the bill also removes the AUC's main purpose, approving utility companies' proposed transmission lines through public hearings and hands that decision over to cabinet members, something Minister Daniluk disagrees with. This is still a regulated utility, and so they have to come before the Alberta Utilities Commission for both the, uh, both the building and the operating. With the proposals of new transmission lines throughout the province, some predict the cost will skyrocket, having a major effect on the Alberta economy. The experts that have looked at these lines that the governments have approved have concluded that they will triple industrial power rates. And there's no way uh, businesses are going to stay in Alberta that use a lot of electricity. Although the amendments have been made to Bill 36, the province has not proposed any changes to Bill 50. In St. Paul, Clayton Brown, New Cap News. Three men are facing weapons and drug charges after Lloydminster RCMP searched a residence in the city. On February 27, the police seized 11.8 ounces of cocaine worth around $40,000 in street value and one restricted firearm. Trevor Cromarty and Jordan Crane have both been charged with possession of a controlled substance for the purpose of trafficking. A third man, Travis Cromarty, has also been charged with possession of a controlled substance for the purpose of trafficking and several firearms related offenses. Vermillion RCMP seized 63 marijuana plants from a rural property near Manville last week. Members of the RCMP detachment, along with Vermillion Traffic Services and the Edmonton Green Team, discovered the grow operation south of the village last Thursday. Along with the plants, police found additional processed marijuana and growing equipment. Mounties say the street value of the processed drugs is approximately $20,000, and the plants are worth $1,000 each. Two Manville residents, 49-year-old Laura Lee Tapley and 52-year-old Robert William Lyson, are charged with the production of a controlled substance and possession of a controlled substance for the purpose of trafficking. City of Lloydminster has officially proclaimed March Nutrition Month for Midwest Food Resources. The local organization focuses on promoting healthy eating habits. 
The recognition comes as a huge honor for the program coordinator, Becky Bonson. It's fantastic. Like all of the hard work that we do to promote healthy eating and stuff, it just kind of feels like we're getting recognition and it's really awesome. The organization provides a number of services geared towards encouraging people to eat more healthy. It's a great uh, time with nutrition month and everything to maybe try the fresh food box out and it's a box that has recipes and tips of how to use the different fruits and vegetables in it so it's a great way to start eating healthier. Midwest Food Resources just launched a new awareness campaign for nutrition month where Border City residents can show their support by purchasing a green ribbon. Green ribbon campaign just to raise awareness about nutrition month and healthy eating and also to raise awareness about Midwest Food Resources. So we're kicking off our green ribbon campaign tomorrow. We have Sobeys and Ernie's on board to sell the ribbons for us. So we're selling them for a dollar and we'll be selling them from tomorrow right until the end of March. Finishing touches are being added to Lakeland College in Lloydminster's first child development center. After nine months of construction, only a few housekeeping duties remain and the plan is to have everything in place within the next six months. Kathy Lee has the details. After struggling through a number of babysitters, Kara Johnston jumped on the chance to enroll her four-year-old in Lakeland's Child Development Center. Child care is a big issue in Lloydminster, so I think that it's wonderful the, the college is seeing that need for our students, for our staff, and, they can, and for the community, and that they're able to meet it in such a fantastic environment. What's even better is the center is located right where she works. It's going to be a big convenience, um, just to be able to have one last stop during the day for pickup or for drop off and also to know that we're in a quality environment with quality care. The project follows a number of inquiries by students and staff for the need of a child development centre on campus. When you look at going back to school, particularly parents, uh, and if you're a single parent, the number one concern is often child care. So this facility will be able to uh, assist with some of those needs. The facility is not only a place for childcare, but also is a learning centre for Lakeland College students taking courses like nursing or psychology. The whole building is equipped with video cameras and large windows that serve as observation tools during their lab time. We can come in here now in the lab and I bring my students down and we can actually observe students uh, at the various ages and how they interact and how they develop and how they learn and how they communicate and, and so uh, it'll be a nice addition to the textbook studies we've been doing in class. The facility houses up to 40 children from 12 months to 5 years old and is designed to be completely accessible for children with disabilities. We will be open from the last week of August when school starts right to the end of June. Uh, it will be a 10 month operation. The Child Development Centre is open to everyone in the community and there are currently 12 children registered. For those interested to sign their child up, contact Lakeland College. Kathy Lee, New Cap News. Coming up after our first break, we'll see how two Midwest women are making their way in jobs traditionally held by men as part of our coverage of the 100th Annual International Women's Day. <laughs> 